The US Air Force has stated that one of its MQ-9 Reaper drones crashed into the Black Sea after a collision with a Russian Su-27 flanker fighter jet. This is the first documented instance of direct physical contact between Russian and US military aircraft since Russia's invasion of Ukraine just over a year ago. There's no doubt that it will heighten tensions between the two countries. On Thursday, the US military released a video showing a jet flying close to its drone, releasing fuel and the propeller being impacted. The state of the Russian Su-27 after the collision is uncertain, although there are unverified accounts indicating that the aircraft may have sustained some damage and managed to land at a base in Crimea. The base in question is most probably Belbek home to the 38th Fighter Aviation Regiment, which flies Su-27SM flankers. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes what actually happened between the American MQ-9 Reaper and Russian Su-27. Let's get into the details. The first question viewers may have is, why was the Reaper in that area? American reconnaissance missions have been a regular occurrence in international airspace over the Black Sea for several years since Russia annexed Crimea in 2014 and the region became heavily militarized. It's not rare for a US drone to be spotted over these waters. In all likelihood, these missions increased since Russia invaded Ukraine. The second question viewers may have is, what can Reaper do? Reaper took over from Predator the platform that initiated the era of unmanned air combat. Predators were best known for their ability to deliver precision strikes as their controllers sat halfway around the world in small and discreet bunkers. Reaper brings much more to the table when compared to Predator. Reaper has an endurance of 27 hours, a ceiling of 50,000 feet, a range of 1,151 miles or 1,852 kilometers, and a max speed of 300 miles per hour, or 482 kilometers per hour. With the ER kit, Reapers have an endurance up to 42 hours without external stores. It's believed that Reapers' intelligence gathering capabilities have enabled the US to help the Ukrainian force by providing them with information regarding the movements of Russian assets and forces. Reapers' main sensor is the nose-mounted MTS-B multi-spectral surveillance and targeting turret and its fuselage-mounted Lynx synthetic aperture radar. But Reaper's pylons are very versatile and can be used to carry a variety of tactical equipment, like communications relay hubs, electronic warfare pods, as well as wide area aerial surveillance WAAS, camera arrays. The additional sensors are designed to act in conjunction with the drone's main sensors. The USAF has put more potent radars on board some Reapers. The idea is to create Ground Moving Targeting Identification GMTI, sensor nodes that can be dispersed around the war zone. GMTI is a radar capability that can be used to trail moving targets on the ground over time using radar. U.S. European Command release states the following. Two Russian Su-27 aircraft conducted an unsafe and unprofessional intercept with a U.S. Air Force intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance unmanned MQ-9 aircraft that was operating within international airspace over the Black Sea today. At approximately 7.03 a.m. CET, one of the Russian Su-27 aircraft struck the propeller of the MQ-9, causing U.S. forces to have to bring the MQ-9 down in international waters. Several times before the collision, the Su-27s dumped fuel on and flew in front of the MQ-9 in a reckless, environmentally unsound and unprofessional manner. This incident demonstrates a lack of competence in addition to being unsafe and unprofessional. 
Our MQ-9 aircraft was conducting routine operations in international airspace when it was intercepted and hit by a Russian aircraft, resulting in a crash and complete loss of the MQ-9, said U.S. Air Force General James B. Hecker, commander of U.S. Air Forces Europe and Air Forces Africa. In fact, this unsafe and unprofessional act by the Russians nearly caused both aircraft to crash. The Russians have provided a different version of what happened. As per it, Russian fighter aircraft did not use airborne weapons or come into contact with a U.S. Air Force MQ-9 Reaper drone over the Black Sea. So while both parties agree that no weapons were used, Russian stated that no collision occurred. The Russian Ministry of Defense claims that the U.S. Air Force MQ-9 maneuvered sharply before apparently entering uncontrolled flight and falling into the Black Sea. The Ministry also said that the Reaper was flying without transponders on and had flown into airspace that Russian authorities declared as restricted after launching the all-out invasion of Ukraine last year. It's important to note that this is not the first incident in which a Russian fighter jet has come close to a Western asset. The UK Ministry of Defense did previously say that a Russian Su-27 flanker had released a missile during an intercept of Royal Air Force RAF RC-135W Rivet Joint electronic surveillance aircraft in October of 2022. It's uncertain whether the flanker actually launched a missile toward the British Rivet Joint, but this incident indicated a potential escalation in Russian tactics and underscored the dangers of risky misjudgments during such occurrences. Consequently, the RAF dispatched Typhoon fighter jets to accompany RC-135Ws on at least some subsequent missions in the area. MQ-9 Reaper is an expensive asset. The cost of an MQ-9 Reaper varies depending on its configuration and the specific equipment and systems included. However, the estimated cost of a basic configuration is around 16 million US dollars. Reaper is a pretty stable system. According to the U.S. Department of Defense, it's logged more than 2 million cumulative flight hours by 2019. Operators of Reaper are highly trained. There's no reason to believe that a Reaper will go out of control without external intervention. As per some assessments, the Russian pilots tried to make the Reaper haywire by dumping the fuel, but by mistake clipped the Reaper, which led to it falling out of the sky. The incident could have been deadly even for the Russian aircraft, but luck seemed to have favored it. It remains to be seen how things pan out going forward. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.